tying a Griffith snap, using some black thread to start with. I've been tying for about, uh, probably, I've been tying three years here at the Northwest Expo. So I just wrap this back and tie in my hackle. A Griffith snat is basically comprised of just like two things, just your peacock earl and your grizzly hackle. So here we go down. Gonna loop this in, tie that in. Good. Come back. Peacock. Tie in our two strands of peacock earl. And do that. Come forward to your eye. Okay. And we're gonna keep going. Gonna wrap this around. You want it to be a, a thick enough body so it looks like a whole bunch of flies. Good morning, everyone. So we're going back and forth. We just want to tie this in a few times. Go forward a few times and go back to the eye and then we'll tie it off. Right here and tie it off about three times-ish until you get it fastened good. And we're just gonna clip that. And we still have like a lot left over so we can use that later for another fly. So we're gonna bring forward our hackle Here we bring it forward to the eye again. We're not gonna do this double, but just bring it forward a few times. We're gonna go one more time around here. And then we're just gonna clip it right by the eye. Just mostly to finish off our fly. Make it so it won't come undone anytime soon. Gonna Finished off with just my little tool here with a few knots. And it helps push the hackle or the thread a little bit away from the eye to help cut that. So, and then we're just gonna, like I said, this is the tool for the head cement. So we're just gonna cement it a little so the knot stays in place. We won't wanna cement it too much because it's a dry fly and we want to keep it uh, so it will stay afloat, which the feathers will help with that and stuff. Have a pretty good fly there. We fish oh, quite a lot, like with my dad and my brother. So we do that for fun and stuff. It's really fun to do. My name is Jocelyn and I'll be demonstrating how to tie a woolly bugger. I've been tying for about three or four years. I have a size 10 hook and I'm going to cut the barb off it so it won't hurt the fish. Now since I've done that, I'm going to place it in. Now I'll be tying it on. I take it like this with my right hand and do this so it's stable and when I cut it, the thread, it will not roll off. I'm going to tie that in. I'm doing blue marabou. I'm going to tie it on just long enough so it's not too long. Just long enough and short. Now I'm gonna cut it, the rest. No matter who makes it, you find stuff you like it, you know. And now I'm going to add my chenille, that's purple, shimmery. I'm gonna cut it just long enough, about here so I'll have extra. Now I'm going to tie this on, same way I did with my marabou. And now I'm going to put on my hackle. 
I decided on these colors because I like them as pops. And I think that the purple with the blue and the black makes it pop more for the fish. Now, after I take off the fuzz from my thing, I'm going to leave it so I'll have room to tie on. And I'm going to bring my thread to the beginning of the hook, the eye of the hook. And I'm going to start wrapping around my chenille, my purple chenille. And you got to make sure that you can still see the eye of the hook. And as I wrap it around and cut it, I'm going to do the same thing with my hackle. Now, I'm going to take the thread over just once around it, and now I'm going to do it a whole bunch just at the eye of the hook. Now I'm going to do it for real, and I'm going to cut it. Just so you know, the first one draw. And so now I'm going to wrap it around my finger and knot it at the eye of the hook so it'll stay in place after the thread. And now I'm going to cut my thread at the very end. And there you have a woolly bunny. I'm Dorothy Zinke. I'm from California. And I'm tying a pale morning dun. Uh, it's, a, it's a quill body with uh, CDC. I use five bets for the tail. And I've split them. So what is that tail material you're using? This, uh, these are five bets, or the fibets, whichever, however you want to pronounce them. Okay. And I'll double back so that they'll never pull out. Actually, I'm going to use a biot body. These are turkey biots. The biots end up looking very segmented as the natural would. This is a hackle plier, plier and it's made by somebody in, in Oregon, and it's the best hackle plier I've ever had. The biots um, end up with a small ridge, but I have four ridges, five ridges, six. What size hook are you using? This is a size 16 dry fly hook. This is CDC. Cola canard comes from the tail of the duck back by the oil gland. I'm going to take this, the center at the top out. It doesn't provide as much flotation as the rest of it does. The nice thing about CDC is you can cut it and it doesn't affect Apart. No, and it doesn't look bad. Okay. Whereas if you cut marabou, it does. And this is the part of the wings? That's for the wing, yes. Add a little thorax. So what, what type of tubbing are you using there? That's, uh, this happens to be trout hunter. But you can use any fine dry fly dubbing. I just like the color of this one. What color is that? It's a, a yellow or pale morning dun color. Then I'll build it up in front. So 
you actually tied it on behind the wings, and then you pulled the wings back, right. and, and then, then put it, it forward to make the wings I, push back. I build a, a kind of a dam okay. in front, okay. pushing it back. I'll do some half hitches. I could use the whip finisher, but I don't want to catch the the CDC. Now I've tied this paradigm style, which means the wing has been spread, and that should catch me some fish. You're welcome. You can see the ridges. Hi there, my name is Monica Mullen. I am from Springfield, Oregon. I've been tying for 15 years and uh, today I am tying a March Brown Crippled Emerger. I'm using a size 14 dry fly hook and basically a rusty colored thread, brown rust colored thread. This is a very simple pattern, but it catches a lot of fish. So we start with the tail is gonna be some Antron yarn. And I just split the yarn in half so there's not so much of it. So this is going to be our trailing shuck. And then we're going to go with a turkey by it for a body. And this is a rusty spinner color. This is going to give our body a segmented look and keep the body thin and sparse. What, what tool is that you're using now? This is a, a, a hackle pliers. Just makes it easier to keep a hold of this thing while you're wrapping it on there. I'm not seeing one with a handle and joints like that. That's cool. Yeah. I believe it's Wasatch that came up with that one. Okay, and because these biots are fairly fragile, just give them a coat of head cement or glue. And while that's drying, we'll get our wing together. We want just a small amount of deer hair. And you want the wing about the same length as your tail off the front of your fly. About half the length of the shank of your hook. And you want to give it a few loose wraps first so it doesn't spray. And then some tight wraps in the back. And when you trim it off, if you leave the butt sections a little long, those will actually trap the hackle when you put hackle on here and keep it from migrating backwards. I'm using a dark brown grizzly hackle and you want this to be slightly longer than what you would normally anticipate for a dry fly just to give it a good base to float it on the water. So you're gonna tie that in right where you tied in your wing. And then give it about three wraps. You don't want it too thick. Really? 
and then tie it off on the head. Last step, a little half hitch for it. Tie off your thread. And there is a March Brown Emerging Cripple. You're welcome. Water of foam 